Welcome everybody to Grapple FK. Um, we are covering Julian Marquez against, or is it Julian? Is it Julian or Julian? Julian. Julian. Julian Marquez. Marquez. Marquez against, I should get this right, Saperbeg Safarov. Nailed it. First time. Um, so Russia against, what's it, this guy's Cuban, you said, Andrew? My understanding is that he's a, a Cuban American. Oh, it says the Cuban Missile Crisis is his nickname. That's pretty cool. It's a good nickname, yeah. That is a good nickname. I think he's uh, okay. a bit like George Masvidal in, in the sense he's a Cuban immigrant, but he's American. Oh, okay. All right. Because if he was Cuban, I don't think he'd be allowed to fight because of the uh, the embargo thing. But they, they go to the Olympics and stuff quite a lot, don't they? Let me bring yes. up the events page and go through stats. Um, so just as a reminder for everyone, for all the fans out there, thank you for watching and please do like the videos and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. Um, so this is a, this is quite a, this is quite a strange one because uh, Julian is coming back after what two and a half years, and uh, Safarov has not done well in the UFC. Um, Safarov, so he's definitely struggled. To, to yeah, he's wildly. struggled. But before the UFC, he had some decent wins in M1. Uh, so around the sim a, a similar height, uh, Saf Saf Safarov's had more experience, a way longer reach, according to this, six inches. That's substantial. Um. The, the similar breakdown in terms of the ways that they've won. Significant strikes favors 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 Safarov, but he's he's got a good strike differential. But he's very susceptible to submissions, isn't he? This guy. Uh, what well, Safarov? Yeah, his jujitsu is not great. Yeah, he's been kimuroed, and yeah, he's definitely been kimuroed. Maybe one other submission. Um, um, whereas Mar Marquez has got an, a negative striking differential, he absorbs more than he lands, which is not good. Defense is better though. And in terms of grappling, we haven't got any stats for Marquez. We, we can check later on to see if he's gone for no takedowns in his UFC fights. He may not, he may not have, um, Sabreg does get people down, but he doesn't really do much. Um, and his takedown defense is 100%, which is expected. He's he's from a wrestling background, Sambo and freestyle wrestling. Um, but yeah, I mean, what do, what do you think about this? This is quite a strange one. Yeah, so I, I just looked up why uh, Julian Marquez has been so inactive. Apparently he had a very s severe injury to his right arm. Okay. Um, which has put him out of action. Um, very serious injury, apparently. Um. But yeah, what so did? it's a slightly unusual fight. They're both pretty inexperienced. Um, I mean, you could say that Safarov is fairly experienced, but he's lost, was it three out of four UFC fights? Yeah, um, well, yeah, he does not have a good record. He's lost, yeah, three out of four. Yeah, and on the other hand, Julian Marquez, well, he's had t two fights. Yeah, he beat Started Darren off Stewart. Well. Yeah. yeah, Darren Stewart, beating Darren Stewart, a big, strong guy. Um, that, that's, that's a decent win, especially that's for a good win, first yeah. fight in the UFC. Yeah, and then he went on to fight Alessio Di Chirico. Um, he lost that fight via split decision, but it's very competitive. Yeah, he hung in there. Yeah, it was. Um, he he rocked Di Chirico at certain points. Um, he got up when Di Chirico took him down. He was just a competitive back and forth, and in that fight, um, Marquez. I wouldn't say he, he was battering De Kiriko, but he, he's backing him up with his power. Yeah. Um, and by the end, De Kiriko looked slightly like a broken man, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Marquez is big and he's powerful. So the, the issue, the thing with Marquez is striking, and he's very much a striker as opposed to a grappler. Although his jujitsu seems to be decent. Well, that's another question uh, that, mm. that I'd like to talk about in a bit. Um, but his his striking, I mean, he's he does well up close, right? Yeah. 
he, he likes he likes to brawl, right? If it's someone mm. standing in front of him and things get messy, he does very well. Right? You know, he finds ways to land. Um, he's not afraid to take a shot to, to land to, to land a big shot. He does very yeah. well when when he gets messy. At range, he he struggles. He's not a range fighter at all. Um, so what what he either has to do is for someone to stand in front of him, someone to come to him, which he tries to do. He tries to encourage people to come into his range by by putting that left hand out there, feinting the jabs and putting his head out there yeah, uh, to get people to come in. Or he, he just walks them down and tries to get them against the cage, which kind of worked against Alessio Di Chirico. The problem with that is he, he often, in the fight against Di Chirico, he, he was actually just following him round. So Di Chirico was just circling around the outside, but instead of uh, Marquez cutting him off um, and forcing him against the cage, he was just following him. Yeah. If that's your kind of style, if you're a brawler kind of style and you you want to engage and you want those messy firefights, you've got to be cutting people off. So that's a yeah. flaw um, in his game plan. But he is good. He does hit hard. Um, so to your point about jujitsu, what, what, what do you think about his jujitsu? Because I'm I not sure. I think it's decent. I mean, he's submitting people, isn't he? Yeah, he's so... People in his... Um... The thing is, is we should really be saying, we should really be comparing it to the person he's fighting, and it probably, well, it's definitely better than his jujitsu, I think. Well, so he he front chokes Darren Stewart. Yeah. Um, and I think I he's think... got a few submissions outside of the UFC as well, doesn't he? Yeah, but, but I mean, you can't really consider those. Yeah. I mean, the, the level of competition, if you're fighting guys who are four and one you know that's that's not really a big deal two and five you know yeah he doesn't have the best record or the people he's fought outside the ufc they're not high caliber guys what, what is he in terms of belt he's a blue belt he's a blue belt yeah because he seems to be attacking subs a fair bit in his fights well this is the thing he attacks them yeah, he doesn't really get them apart from that front choke against. I say it says front choke here on topology. I think it was a guillotine. Yeah, no, it is a guillotine. It says it here. Yeah. Yeah. So apart from that, um, he's not really getting these chokes, and I'm slightly confused because against Alessio De Chirico, I think it was in the first round. De Chirico goes for the single leg, and then Marquez jumps on his neck and falls down. Yeah. Now. In theory, that's not a difficult submission, but in reality, it's a difficult one to pull off. Yeah. Only a high-level BJJ guy is going to have the confidence to do that because you're giving up position. You've got to be damn sure that, you, that you're sinking the, that forearm in under his neck. Yep, yep. So that makes me... And, and he's, not, he's not that guy. He's not a, a BJJ guy who can just do that. So that yeah. makes me think there's a slight lack of awareness when it comes to submissions and the ground game. So that makes me think he's not actually that good. Mm. I'm, I'm being a blue belt. Yeah, that kind of kind of makes sense. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. And he was attacking those guillotines a lot and he, he didn't get them. Mm. That said, also against Darren Stewart and De Chirico, actually in, in that fight against Darren Stewart in the first round, he got taken down by Darren Stewart. So his takedown yeah. defense isn't great. But when he did he scrambled really nicely. And got Darren Stewart off him very quickly in the scramble. Takedown defense is fifty-two percent apparently, but Darren Stewart got him down four times. Yeah, and but Darren Stewart is not a grappler, as far as I'm aware. He's pretty good with takedowns, though. He took down Kevin Holland as well. Yeah, fair enough. That yeah. was a nice double leg. Um, pretty good with his takedowns. But yeah, I mean, Alessio took him down four times too. Um. But just going back to the point about his, his BJJ, he he did well in the scramble against Darren Stewart. He got Alessio De Chirico off him, yeah, at least once. And I remember thinking, oh, that's 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 quite good. And Alessio De Chirico is no joke. Um, no, no. He's, he's he's had a few fights in the UFC, and he's a decent all round fighter. Yeah. So and it's, that was a competitive fight. It was, yeah. So, just in terms of. Marquez's ground game it's for me it's a mixed bag I'm just not quite mm. sure um, but yeah I mean beating sorry he didn't beat De Kiriko, but 
having a close decision loss against Dikiriko is something. Yeah, and having a a, a win over Darren Stewart and a, a KO in your first fight. I mean, he, he seems to be, from what I've seen, he's like a decent all-around fighter. The problem is, is obviously the layoff. It's been a very long time. Yeah, so it'll be what um, over two years, fuck. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a long time. And if you're saying he had a serious injury as well, but I mean, it, it really depends. I mean, you know, we saw, we saw, um, what was his name, uh, Brian Ortega take two years off, and everyone kind of ruled him out, saying, you know, he took a battering from. Uh, Max Holloway, you took two years out and he can, he worked on everything. He had a few injuries, he got over that. He looks like a completely new fighter. So it's very difficult in these situations to know how these people have developed. You know, yes, I mean, you know, two it's years. Very difficult. He could come yeah. back and be really, really good. I mean, I, I think he's a better fighter than Saperbeg. Um, Saperbeg's been more active than him, albeit he's been losing, but he has been more active. It's very difficult to know, you know, what what has he been up to, um, mm -hmm. and with with Brian Ortega, I, I mean, slightly diverging here, but I just was not expecting him to come back and look like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, two, two years is a long time. I mean, injuries it is a long aside, time. it's a long time yeah. to learn. It's a long, exactly. It's a long time to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it could it could go either way, as you say. Yeah. So just just to recap on. Um, Marquez's strengths is a tough brawler with, with power. Yeah. Um, if if it gets up close and messy, yeah, he's gonna do very well. And he's got a chin as well. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think. Uh, sorry, carry on. I think this is a good stylistic matchup uh, for Marquez because uh, Sapperberg is that his name? Beg? Yeah, Sapper Beg, yeah. Sapper Beg, that's a very strange name. So uh, Sapper Beg is Beg. Uh, often it's a it's it's a Turkic ending to a name. It's just a Turkic name this. But he's yeah, he's Russian, he's from Dagestan, but Beg is normally at the end of yeah. Turkic names. Uh Good but, knowledge, Walid. thank you, thank you. Good that's knowledge. the uh, Central Asian knowledge and the Caucasus knowledge coming through again. Completely yep. useless, but some of the viewers may be interested. You never know. Um, but yeah, he's, um, he's from, he's from a, as most of the guys from that region in the world, he, he's from a Sambo freestyle wrestling background. He's originally from Eagles MMA, which is the team that Khabib started out in, in Dagestan. Um, he's just not as good as them, basically. Uh, you know, um, that, that's my analysis of him. I mean, he does have some strengths, but I, don't feel like this guy is a UFC level fighter, in my opinion. Probably being a bit harsh, but no, no. I mean, I, I think that's a fairly accurate assessment. I mean, he, he comes in in 2016. He loses to Jan Valente. Jan, Jan Valente is a journeyman, unranked journeyman fighter. He's not the best in the world, and in that fight was interesting because st st straight from the the outset, Sapper Beg was pushing the pace. If he was throwing the jab, he was throwing those left hooks. Um, he was countering nicely. When Jan Valente was coming forward, uh, Sapper Bear was countering nicely with the, the left hooks. But he put on such a pace, and I think he looked flustered. The, the output was very high. He looked to be trying extremely hard. I think he just burnt himself out. Um, and then it got very messy and very sloppy. And I think in the second round, he was just completely exhausted. Uh, he fucked up his knee. He had a knee injury, apparently. Um, then Jan Valante had him up against the cage. And this was really strange. Jan Valante was basically just only tapping him with the strikes and elbows as if he knew that Sapperberg was completely done and he didn't want to just hurt him any more than necessary. Mm. Strange ending to a fight. I've never seen that. I've never seen a fighter yeah. let somebody off the hook like that. But, but I get it. I think Sapperberg was completely done at that point. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, Sapper Beg is, is a difficult one to, to, to analyze. He, he pumps the jab. Okay. He yeah. looked, kind of looks, looks like a boxer pumping that jab, but he's not following up. 
Yeah. And then at times he'll swing these wild hooks. Yeah. Um, and it, it's frenetic, frenzied striking. Uh, there's no control. There's no apparent game plan. There's no strategy there, apparently. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a weird one. I mean, so he, same he with, fought Jack. Uh, so go on, Willard. No, I was just going to say, same with his takedowns as well. Like, he can take people down, but then he just kind of runs out of ideas. Exactly. Yeah, running out of ideas is that yeah. kind of sums him up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, he lost to Jan Valente. Then he lost to Tyson Pedro. Bear in mind, Tyson Pedro was 6-1 and one at the time. Uh, he lost to a couple yeah. in the first round. And it's that was good. after that was after Sapper Beg got the takedown. Two apparently, according to yeah. this. So he so he gets a takedown, yeah. then he gets submitted um, from the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And that's happened to him. Uh well actually that didn't happen to him against Vieira, but Vieira took him down. But yeah, his his he's He's not great. <laughs> he's not great. I um no. He's 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 not he's not good. In some ways I kind of think that the UFC have you, you know they know Marquez is coming coming back after two and a half years and they've kind of given him opponent an opponent to tune him up because Marquez has the potential to be I wouldn't say an elite fighter or you know I'm not sure if he can be top 15 but he can he's got the potential to be an exciting fighter he has power he comes forward he's got certain base of fans in you know Cubans um so I think maybe they've kind of given him a, a tune up fight here yeah cuz you can't if someone's taken two and a half years off and you know they've had serious injuries you're not going to give him someone who's fucking on a three fight win streak or something so uh yeah, I mean, counterpoint to that, Safarov, I think he, he has dropped somebody. I think it might have been Jan Valente. Like he dropped him, so he does have power. And yeah, I'm walked. not too worried about that because Marquez has got a chin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has rocked fight. people. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, they're big guys, aren't they? You know, you're six one, six two. You weigh 90 kilos on the night, you get a punch on someone, you might rock him fighting isn't it yeah so um yeah and another thing about Safarov is uh, in the Jan Vlante fight he was throwing the jab and Jan Vlante was countering before yeah. Safarov's jab landed so that there's a speed issue there he's, he's not quick um, yeah he's not quick yeah he looks old as fuck as well yeah I mean he's my he's age only 34 he looks, yeah he's, he, no, he, he looks like he's had a rough go with things mate <laughs> yeah he has yeah I mean I suspect you're, you're... that he was just kind of hanging around with that Dagestani crew met someone and then someone signed him <laughs> probably for his Dagestani signed him as well but he does have some decent wins at M1 not against the best competition in the world but he just hasn't done well in the UFC and from what I've seen let's get on to predictions now from what I've seen Although Marquez has been out for two, two and a half years, I don't think Safarov Safarov has the overall skill set uh, to beat Marquez. Unless like Marquez is, you know, really had a tough go of things over the last two and a half years, but we'll never know that. We we just won't know what what he's been getting up to. So, yeah, I'm I'm trying to think how Safarov can win this fight. It's not impossible he could drop Marquez. It's not impossible. If he puts a pace on him in the first round, it's not impossible. But then Marquez survived um, a first round blitz from Darren Stewart. Yeah, and Darren Stewart power. hits hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he could, Safarov could take down Marquez. Um, but Marquez has been taken down by better fighters and he survived. Got back up or submitted them. Yeah. Uh, I think if Safrov wants to take Marquez down, he can probably do it. Yeah, I mean, he's from a wrestling background, so he could. The problem is, he doesn't really do anything with his takedowns. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Yeah, so I you think... know, he, his last fight was in March. He lost by sub in the first round. 
Um, so he has been more active, but he's just been losing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have to assume that Safarov is going to take Marquez down at some point. Yeah, possibly. I think we yeah. also have to assume that Marquez will probably get back up. Yeah. And then most of the fight will be standing, where Marquez has a clear advantage, I think. Yeah, yeah. Particularly because Safarov is probably going to go a bit mental and be a bit re- reckless, which plays into Marquez's game plan. Yeah, I mean, if he goes for a few takedowns and he gasses out, he's fucked, I think. And Safarov does gas out. Yeah, well, there you go then. Yeah. yeah. So, well, What are the odds for this? I haven't looked. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm just hoping there's some value on Marquez. Yeah. Yeah, same. Because if he's like plus 500 or minus 500. I don't think he'll be like, I think he's been out so long. I don't think he'll be around that kind of area. I'll be very, I'll I'll be surprised if he is. Because he's been out for so long. Uh, Minus 300. I'll take that. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. I mean, Marquez is, uh, let me have a look. Sorry, Safrov. Safarov is nine to four. What's that in American, Walid? Plus two two five, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Plus two two five. Good yeah, I name. did economics and maths at uni, guys. Yeah. Well done, Walid. Still uh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sick man. Wasted my life. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. Uh, I mean, there's no way I'd ever bet on Safarov. <laughs> no, Ever. no way, dude. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I could beat up Safarov at this point. <laughs> I'm kidding, not really. He'd, he'd beat the shit. No, nah, he would fuck you up, dude. So, yeah, he'd fuck <laughs> yeah. me up. He'd probably kill me. <laughs> About two seconds, but in terms of the UFC, he's a he's probably one of the worst fighters I've seen in the UFC. <laughs> yeah, he's not good. He should probably. But, the thing is, he, he's got that one win right after the two losses, and then he's got another. If he loses this one, he's out. I oh, think. yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. I mean, if Unless, this wasn't like, the cut time yeah. of COVID 19, he wouldn't be here. Yeah, he wouldn't be here anyway, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with, this, with this guy, when you look at his record, I think this happens to quite a few guys that they kind of do MMA on an amateur basis you know, in their free time. Yeah. So this guy had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fights before the UFC against not very good competition. Yeah, not very good. And he's probably got a day job while he's doing this. Yeah. Then he gets a call from the UFC. The UFC just wants to try him out to see if he's actually any good. But then he just turns out to be shit. Well, also, it's the people he was around, you know, someone, you know, when you're around with fucking Khabib and Islam Makachev and all these guys and Ali Abdulaziz and all these people, like someone can put in a word for you, I'm assuming, you know, give him a shot. If he's shit, chuck him out. So Mm. a lot of ways, there there are so many good fighters out there that the UFC do. I mean, the UFC can't keep a track, keep track of everyone. I'm aware of guys on regional circuits who are like 10 and 0 and have KO'd 10 people in a row. A KO'd very good people and the UFC won't even call them because no one knows who they are. They haven't got a good manager. They don't really put themselves out there in terms of social media. So, yeah. yeah. How are you going to find them? Um, but, yeah, I think yeah, I've, I've got I've got I've got Marquez. I think Marquez will finish him in the three round within the three rounds. Probably KO I think so him. too. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Marquez probably finishes him in round two. Yeah, I'm going to go with round two as well. I think round one, there'll be a little feeling out process. Safarov probably get frustrated, go for a few takedowns. Um, I just think going into round two, Safarov could be pr- pretty tired. Yeah, and then, yeah, he'll be tired. And then Marquez will yeah. go Cuban missile on him. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think this this one is for the safe come come. Yeah, I'm th- I'm thinking safe come come here. I mean assuming I mean we're assuming that Marquez is going to return to his previous form against Dikiriko. Yeah, if, and we, if have, that Marquez we have Marquez turns up, he, he wins. 
he wins yeah if if we also we we also should mention to the viewers that we we always keep a close eye on the weigh-ins as well let's let's keep a close eye on the weigh-in for this because mark has been out for a long time so i want to see what kind of shape he's coming in you know hopefully not missing weight or anything but if if anything missing weight might even help him a bit if he's got more weight behind him throwing a punch he's already got quite a lot of power but i'd be interested to see what kind of shape he's in mm. Yeah, well, if, if, if fighters miss weight, sometimes it actually helps them. Yeah, I, th I think gen generally it's a negative thing because they're trying generally so hard to, to cut the weight. It's a difficult weight cut. Yeah, and they're just drained and they're yeah. Sometimes they're... it can be a good thing in that they've got more weight right behind them, particularly at the lower weights. Well, it depends if they've pounds. actually tried to cut the weight or not. If they haven't tried, yeah, then, yeah, it's, it's an advantage. But then it's a, yeah, then it's an advantage. Yeah. If you're killing yourself to get off the weight, then it's yeah, and it's still not happening, then it's a big problem. Yeah, if you've done it like in a really short time span, yeah, then it's definitely not good for you. You're more susceptible to getting knocked out as well, right? You explaining this to me, something about the cush, the the cushioning of the brain or some shit. That's right. Yeah. So when you dehydrate, yeah. you have less water in between your brain and your skull. Yeah. So which is why a... Till got floored by Masvidal at that weight. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. For for example, yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go, folks. We've both got uh, Marquez to beat Sapperbeg Safarov. I think it will be around two KO as well for Marquez. Uh, we're going to put him in the uh, yeah safe come come, and then uh, we we'll be covering some more fights very soon. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, please do like and subscribe. Take care. Bye. 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 I'm trying to figure out how to stop this for our recording. Shit. One second. We're still recording. Yeah, we are. Okay. Well, one.